All right, good afternoon, my friends, and thank you so much for joining us for this very special Sunday afternoon edition of News 19 as we are gathered together to celebrate our national championship women's basketball team and head coach Don Staley. I'm Andrea Mock. Reggie Anderson here, and it's going to be an exciting day downtown, and check out our crew. Yes, we are on every single corner of downtown getting ready to watch all of the action. Darcy Strickland, Cassidy Byer, Whitney Sullivan are all there, and we are just waiting for this parade to get started. We're already running just to skosh late, Reggie. That's okay. I mean, you know, the weather's nice. You know, maybe they're enjoying the weather because it's certainly a, a good time. Really the best weather we've had here, I think, in, in quite some time. All right. It looks like the action has gotten started right behind our News 19's Cassidy Buyer. We are going to check in with her first. Cassidy. Yes, guys, it is a beautiful day here in downtown Columbia. As you can tell, it's pretty loud, but that's not stopping the party. It has just gotten underway. I'm at the very beginning of the parade. It's a six block parade here in downtown Columbia. I'm at the corner of Maine and Laurel. We just saw the team get on their float. At, they uh, gathered at City Hall behind us, and we did see Dawn Staley, which was very exciting. Um, and I am here with a special guest. We have D my friend Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. How are you? Doing okay. How so I you? noticed Dwayne's very cool hat. Dwayne, can you explain your hat to me? Well, it's kind of hard not to notice it, but uh, yeah, I made it for the uh, championship parade two years ago. Just uh, what the wind didn't destroy that day. Had to make a few adjustments, change up some pictures, and uh, and uh, wore it out for Final Four to watch uh, games. Not in person, but uh, then I added the uh, championship on top to uh, for today. So. Awesome. Dwayne, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming out here, and it sounds like you had that for the last championship game, so you're going to have to have it for another couple of years, aren't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> change it up for the next one. Change it up for uh, the next one, yeah. Great to see you. You too, Dwayne. Andrea? All right, Cassidy, thank you. And of course, just like you heard Dwayne say, this is not the first national championship that our team is celebrating today. It is their third national championship. The first under Don Staley was 2017 with a player many of you have heard of, Asia Wilson. Heathwood Hall grad, obviously the consensus national player of the year is a junior, and she's doing pretty well for the Las Vegas Aces, too. Uh, back to back WNBA titles and bringing that team here to town soon. Mm -hmm. Then in 2022, won the title again. That time, Aaliyah Boston was the shining star. And now this year, I would say, and I got to ask you, Reggie, because you're the sports expert more than me, but to me, this year with so many stars on the team, Camila Cardoso, Chloe Kitts, Ashlyn Watkins, Raven Johnson, Pow Pow, it's hard to even say, oh, this one player led, led him to victory. Well, you make a good point. There were so many weapons that this team had. If yeah. one wasn't working, they could plug in the other one. Now, Cardoza was named the NCAA Final Four most outstanding player, but she obviously had a lot of help. I mean, Full Wiley, the freshman out of W.J. Keenan, they had these, each player could like put in eight, 10 points, six points, four rebounds, that kind of thing. And you, you match them all together and you get a 38-0 season. It was just a, an, an incredible season for the Gamecocks. All right, so if you guys are looking at the parade cars right now, this isn't just the Gamecocks in the parade. We have a very long list of local businesses um, that are all going to be there today. We've got the Girl Scouts coming soon. Uh, Miss Richland County will be there. Our friends from iHeartMedia are coming. A lot of local businesses, local charities, um, uh, everybody. Oh, here's our Girl Scouts coming around. Love to see that. There are 108 walkers today with the South Carolina Girl Scouts. Of course, their headquarters are right downtown, right off of Gervais Street. So I could, I could go for some Thin Mints right now. Why didn't they deliver us Thin Mints? You know, the peanut butter patties, which they don't call them peanut butter patties. I think there's a new what name. are they called? I, there's, it, I don't, it's the same delicious taste, but it's a different, uh, they don't refer to them as peanut butter patties, but the shortbreads are pretty good. Why, why, how do we, we get deviated from that? I don't know, but I'm really glad you did because I'm hun hungry. Um, yeah, it would be nice if the Girl Scouts were passing out cookies. But um, after that, we've got a couple businesses coming, Better Building Communities, Ultimate Choice Partners. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about the team, Reggie, and about what you saw this this year we talked a little bit about Malaysia full Wiley um, from Keenan High School and those of you who are watching us who are from Columbia right now because of course we are live streaming this tell your friends you can watch us on WLTX on YouTube on our WLTX page on our WLTX app but for those of you who are right here in the Midlands you might have seen a Malaysia full Wiley billboard 
go up here in the Midlands. And that is because uh, Steph Curry is now partnered with Malaysia Full Wiley. How incredible is this and that the opportunities under name image likeness that our students have that they didn't have before? Exactly. And somebody like a Full Wiley who is obviously a very exciting player. She is creating her own national brand. We've seen Asia Wilson do her. Now, you can imagine what Asia would have had before. In, I mean, oh, I mean, my but, Lord. Yeah, I mean, that, that could have been fantastic. She would have been on the side of every building in downtown Columbia or every product that we exactly. could get her on. Uh, all right, we'll continue talking about the game and our amazing players in just a moment. But News 19's Darcy Strickland is standing by. It doesn't look like the parade has gotten to you yet. Darcy, where are you posted up? I'm literally in the middle of the parade route. So for anybody who's familiar with this area, the Marriott is to my left, and then the museum is right behind me to my right. But take a look at this crowd. All of Main Street is now painted garnet and black. I can see the parade cars starting to get closer to us, probably about a block and a half, maybe two blocks away. This crowd has grown exponentially in the last probably hour and a half. I wasn't here for the first parade and I was not going to miss this one. I'm so excited that we've had an opportunity to talk with hundreds of people who say that they have been following the Gamecocks from the very beginning. I'm going to bring my friend Ridley over. Ridley, come on over. So Ridley is my height and she's in sixth grade. And she's a basketball player. Who's your favorite player? Camilla Cardoso, definitely. Tell me why she's your favorite. She just has like so much energy on the court and she like never gives up. She just keeps going. I love that. Now talk to me about what positions you play when you play. So I don't really have like a designated position. Like I move all around. I play all around the court. I just, yeah, I do a lot of stuff. So obviously you've been following the Gamecocks this entire season. What was the moment that you, when was the moment that you realized that this team was going to be national champions? Um, it was probably the Tennessee game. Oh, wow. What'd you see then? When Cardoso hit that three, I was like, you know, I'm always going to be a Gamecock, always will be a Gamecock, never again. Really, do you hope to play for Don Staley one day? Yes, definitely. That's All right, so here's your chance. Tell her. Tell Coach. Don Staley, when I get to college and try out, don't forget about me, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Ridley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You see City of Columbia Police coming up behind me. That means the parade route is getting closer and closer. As you can see, they are making their way down Main Street and will be heading to the State House. That's where the parade route ends. But I'm going to let you just take in the sights and sounds of this moment. I know we're expecting to see at least 116 entrants, according to the City of Columbia. 116 entries, whether it be cars or floats or motorcycles or even people just walking right now with the rally rag saying, Go Cox! Oh, game! 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 <laughs> Let's listen in, folks. Let's listen in. All right, Darcy, thank you so much. I love it that you got a little Gamecock uh, going back and forth there. But one thing that that sweet girl who wants to play for Dawn Staley was talking about is what I think was one of the defining moments of the season, Reggie. SEC Championship up in Greenville. Obviously, our team travels very well. The second round was here in um, Columbia at Colonial Life Arena. First rounds were up in Greenville. Um, and that, it was a Saturday night. I feel like everybody will remember where they were when Camila Cardoso hit that game and Ending three-pointer. And not that it would have derailed their national championship hope. It wouldn't have. But it would have been the end of a perfect season. Right. And maybe maybe it's a 37-1 and one season instead of 38-0. But, yeah, that was against against Tennessee. And Tennessee, you had to be thinking, okay, they've got this. I mean, they, they right. clearly they had it. They did. And they decided to play playground uh, defense and just let her, you know, shoot it from wide open three-point. Even, even, you know, my, my 12-year-old could have hit that. <laughs> No, he could not have, but I love your 12-year-old. But you know what's wild is that Carmilla Cardoso is not even really known as a three-point shooter. That was her first three-point she hit, I think, in her career. If oh, it's my goodness. The season. So, uh, uh, something else amazing and another amazing moment. Uh, my good friend, Khadija Sessions, right when she became a viral, what do you call it, a meme? That was the night that Khadija Sessions became a meme because she got up off that bench, y'all, and she took off. She just went just like this. Are we, are we doing a ran. visual? Are we doing a uh, yeah, yeah, that's what she did. And she ran out of, off the camera, and I texted her. 
Yes, I will. It was like this, right. but she's way cooler than I am. Um, but I texted her and I said, where were you running to? Just out of curiosity, she said, I don't even remember doing it. I don't even know. Well, Khadija's <laughs> kind of really, she's really gone from being, you know, after after graduation, you know, she obviously she's a, she's a private coach. She's right. done some broadcasting. And then when the NCAA allowed an extra assistant coach, she jumped the chance to join Dawn's staff. And, and she's been a fixture on that bench and really been a, main, a really good contributor for that, for that staff. And, and I have loved that. It, you know, those that don't remember, Khadija Sessions went to the Final Four with Dawn back in 2015 and was on that team with Asia Wilson, played with her as well. Um, she's a Myrtle Beach girl yes. and um, really has brought the heart, so much heart. And uh, when Dawn hired her, she said, nobody knows this program and what it stands for and what it's about more than Khadija. And if you ask, if you listen to locker rooms, interviews by Reggie and Chandler Mack, um, they'll often say, you know, she gets some hype, she gets them going. And if you looked, if you watched the games and you watched the moment that the players got announced, she would very often be the last one to do a high five and sometimes have a special dance and a special um, interaction with each of the players. And so talk about an amazing story of it's your first year being a coach for uh, the SEC and you win a national championship. By the way, she was also an assistant coach for the Ridgeview Boys basketball team. Yes. So she's been a part of a state championship before, so she has coached and played at a high level and she's continuing to do so. Such a sweet story. Um, so many amazing different stories to tell, but yeah, that three-pointer by Camila Cardoso, like, I, like you said, it wouldn't have had an uh, effect on the national championship run, but it was one of the most amazing moments in basketball <laughs> that I have ever seen. I it, have ever seen. It was, it was one of the wildest things. I mean, again, just you know, you can't believe it. Are they actually going to leave her open? Yeah, they are going to leave her open. They is she going to shoot it? Yes, yeah, she's going to shoot it. And she's going to make it. And is she going to make it? Yes, yeah, she's going to make it. Oh, do I hear the cheerleaders coming? Did I hear the band? Okay, these are our Girl Scouts. Obviously, News 19 has different cameras in different locations. So some of our wonderful folks in the parade, you'll get to see more than once. These are now uh, the they're people. Encore. They're encore. Yes, they're <laughs> They're very media savvy, the Girl Scouts are. They know where our cameras are, so they're, they're making their second appearance. Look closer. Do you see, is anyone passing out cookies? I see no cookies, no. Reggie. No one's bringing you thin It's a little warm out there, though. Maybe they might uh, They might not make it. They might melt. You know, we need to get them inside as soon as possible. No one's bringing you thin mints. All right, uh, I see our famous dancing man um, from downtown. Anybody who goes downtown sees our famous dancing man. He's out there at the parade as well. I don't know that he's actually participating or just on the side. But yeah, y'all, like Darcy said, we have 106 entrants. So it is going to be a while before we get to see our Gamecocks. Well, we do have Whitney Sullivan, who is up, really got a bird's eye view of everything. Whitney, what's going on? Hey friends, when I say the atmosphere is electric, it is electric. People have been waiting for this parade out along Main Street for hours and the moment is finally here. So to give you some context about where I'm at, I'm about a block away from the State House and we are seeing right now the parade coming through. Now first in line for the parade is Jack Haynes. He's a legendary Gamecock fan. If you go to any of the women's basketball games or the football games, you probably have seen him in his 1964 Ford Echo Line van. Now here's a fun fact, he has had this vehicle since the 1970s. He said his first time going to a USC game was when he was eight years old. And so as soon as he bought this car, actually from his father for $1, the day after he bought that van, he wrapped it up in Gamecock uh, paraphernalia and gear and signs. And so a lot of times you can tell that the party is about to get started as soon as you see Jack and his van coming by playing Sandstorm. Now also next to me, we have the Metro City Slingshots. You know what? I would love to take a ride in one of those souped up vehicles. We were able to see them last year as well. And our friends with the Metro City Slingshots, they are blasting Sandstorm, giving everybody a wave. Now my friends, who you're also gonna see, and we've talked about this a little bit, were the Girl Scouts of South Carolina. Now one of the reasons that they are in this parade is because of their ties with the basketball team. So every year they do something called the Women of Distinction, where they honor women 
in our community who are leading the way professionally, personally, who are really setting the bar high and shattering glass ceilings. And back in 2014, Coach Staley received the honor of Women of Distinction. Then in 2020, uh, former Gamecock star Asia Wilson also received the honor of Women of Distinction from the Girl Scouts. But again, the crowd is electric. And I have to say this, from my view, it's an incredible picture of the support that this team has. There are thousands of people out here on Main Street. I am looking at a sea of garnet and black and white. There are signs, there are posters, there are people dancing. I mean, everybody is so excited. And so what we are seeing today is really a glimpse, a picture of what we have seen all season and for the past few seasons under Coach Daly's leadership. And that is the support that they have received from the from the Columbia community, from not just the Columbia community really, but from the community across the state of South Carolina. People love the Gamecocks and they show up and show out for them no matter where they're traveling to, whether they're at Colonial Life Arena or whether they are on the road. They show out and show up for the Gamecocks. And it's really one of the reasons why they have been given the wonderful name of Gamecock fans because of that solidarity, that support, that commitment to being there for the women. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna send things back to you guys because my slingshot friends are so loud. <laughs> Sandstorm is so loud, I can't even hear myself think, so I'm going to send it back to you guys. But as you can hear, the party has started out here on Main Street. All right, Whitney, thank you so much. And I got to agree with Whitney. I don't understand the slingshot cars, but every time I see one of those driving around in downtown Columbia, I get excited. It, those are really Look cool at rides. Those like, are yeah. fancy. All right, let's talk real quick about Asia Wilson because um, Whitney brought up the fact that Asia and Dawn had both won the Woman of Distinction Award. Um, one of the great things I love about Dawn Staley in this program is the way she keeps everybody close after they graduate and watching the relationship between Dawn and um, Asia continue on Twitter. They're always showing up at each other's games, supporting each other has been a really beautiful thing. And when I got to sit down with Dawn Staley, if y'all remember and you watch the interview, if not, it's at WLTX.com one on one. And I asked her about her um, statue. She said, I didn't want a statue. I wanted Asia to be the only one to have a statue. Well, that is a team first philosophy. It and, is. I mean, and, and again, like, like, like any good coach, any humble coach, they want the players to get all the honors. Right. And I just was like, really, Dawn? Because you deserve one, too. But she said, no, I didn't. I was really surprised. And I wanted Asia to really shine in that light. And Reggie, Asia and her team are actually coming here to play an exhibition it game. Is. You're going to have a chance to watch them. October, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's gonna be, that's gonna be, I'll be very curious what kind of attendance we have for that game. I would hope it would be, you know, close. 18,000 strong. Every, it's not every day you get a two-time WNBA champion to come to your city. And what is our closest WNBA team? Atlanta? I guess Atlanta. Atlanta. So getting them to all come here to yes. Columbia will be a really big thing so yeah so keep that on your calendars because I know everybody watching right now is a women's basketball fan I see a lot of those t-shirts I did some shopping online this weekend to find the uh, great women's basketball swag and I just saw some walk by our camera but we have got to check in immediately with Darcy Strickland Darcy <laughs> Andrea, I, I'm telling you, I just really don't even have the words to describe how exciting is there, this is. I brought my friend Carter over. We know there are a lot of Gamecock fans that are in Columbia, but Carter, Miss Carter, who is seven years old, tell me where you're from. Um, Charleston. You came all the way up from Charleston to support the Gamecocks today, right? Yeah. Tell me who your favorite Gamecock women's basketball player is. You told me earlier, she's really tall, she's the center. She got a little nervous. We're live on TV. Did you tell me it was Camilla Cardosa? Yeah, that's what you yeah. told me. Tell me why you like her. Because she's tall and she helps her teammates. There it is. I love someone who loves a supporter, right? So you told me that you had a chance to go see the Gamecocks play in Greenville, right? Mm -hmm. What was it like being there? I was happy to see her and she was doing great and she was clapping for her team. Now, do you play basketball? Sometimes. Are you thinking that one day you might want to play for Don Staley and the Gamecocks? Yeah. Yeah. We talked about this because Miss Carter, again, seven years old, is almost my height. Carter, thank you so much. You can go back over to Daddy and enjoy the parade. <laughs> again, Andrea, 
thousands of people are lining the streets here in downtown Columbia, a sea of garnet and black. And for viewers who are just tuning in, just to give you a point of reference where I'm standing, literally in the middle of the parade. The Marriott Hotel is off to my left. The Columbia Museum of Art is right off to my right. Uh, Within the last hour or so, I would say that from here all the way down to the State House, the number of people have not doubled, but probably quadrupled. And we are not even halfway through the parade. We know there's going to be 106 entrants. Um, I think at this point we may be a fourth of the way through, if that far. Uh, the crowd is getting more and more excited as the evening goes on in anticipation of getting ready to see the Lady Gamecocks. So, um, there's nothing that can be thrown from the vehicles. That's a point that some folks may not know. Back in my day when we went to parades, things were thrown out of cars and the kids would run out and grab it. Nothing can be thrown out of vehicles this year. It's a safety issue. And as you can see, this Columbia police officer is making sure everybody is in a safe distance. But since nothing can't be, can be thrown, doesn't mean nothing can be given because they're handing these things out as they come along the way. What did I just get? Let me see, what did I just get? This is, oh, it's my lucky day. It's a free cone or a free uh, slushy at Pelican Snowball. <laughs> it's a good day, it's a good day. Again, we've got 106 entries. Right now, driving past us is Grand Council Queen for the state of South Carolina. That is Amelia Young. Hey, how you doing? And all of her supporters behind her. We have seen quite a few crowns. Hey, how are y'all? Hey, everybody say News 19. News 19. <laughs> we have some viewers here. Hey, yeah, thank you. Um, so I've seen a couple of crowns walk past heading towards the starting point for the parade. So I imagine we're going to see a lot of queens before the day is over. But again, um, as far as the folks who are participating today, everybody from the Girl Scouts to local businesses that have supported the Gamecocks throughout this winning season. Um, I need to make that plural, winning seasons, 38 and 0. You've got folks who are in their personal vehicles. You've got golf cars. You've got the city of Columbia walking through to support as well. There's nothing like having one of those rally rags in your hands at the game. <laughs> Parks and Rec here as well, supporting the Gamecocks. Um, we're expecting to see more Girl Scouts. Here are some more Girl Scouts. Y'all say go Gamecocks! <laughs> hey, you can't have you can't have Girl Scouts without their troop leaders, and they're here supporting them as well. And as you can see, we've got a few more walkers before we have another vehicle come up. Um, again, it's incredible to see um, how sports brings people together. It doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your race, it doesn't matter your socioeconomic place in life. Everybody from every demographic is here today supporting the Carolina Gamecocks and the incredible run that these women have had. 38 and 0, 100 black men of Greater Columbia just driving past us with the bubbles. <laughs> Young man here on his golf cart and more blue lights. So Andrea, we are going to stay here at the parade, obviously, because I feel like I might have the best seat in the house. I know Whitney's up high and looking down and enjoying the parade from that perspective. But right here, to be right here, standing next to other folks who have supported the Gamecocks this entire season, um, it's incredible. I, I really am at a loss of words to describe what we're seeing and what we're feeling here. All right, Darcy, thank you so much. And one thing Darcy said that is so true, you know, she said it brings together a lot of socioeconomic backgrounds. And one of the things I know that Dawn and her program have been very big on is making the Gamecocks women's basketball team accessible to everybody. And like she said, she opens up practices and that's free. Um, a lot of her events, her fan events, where she invites people to come out and get the players autographs, those events are free. You know, their big welcome back they just did at Colonial Life Arena, that was free. And then of course, you can get a general admission ticket for like 20 bucks during the regular season. And there are certain places you can sit for that. So she really has made this sport accessible 
to everyone. And it's one of the reasons they are one of the leading attendance team in the country, if you will. And obviously, you see a lot of these fams are out on the street right now where they can almost reach out and touch the parade participants and obviously waiting on the Gamecocks to make their way through the parade. All right, I don't know what that float was, but it had some RIP and then some schools names on huh. it. Maybe schools that, that we savage. have. That is absolutely savage. Maybe schools that we have beaten that along the Nate way. That was the Rutherford's float. That was the coroner's float. Oh, I get it. I, okay, fabulous. Darcy, I don't know if y'all could hear Darcy's yeah. voice or just I could, but um, that she was saying that that was the coroner's float, and then they had everybody who um, had beaten the Gamecocks and Nada Rutherford, obviously. Really big presence on social media. I, I advise you following her. She gives a lot of good life updates. But um, like Darcy said, there's 106 entrants in this parade. Some people are just citizens. Some folks are business owners, different charities, elected officials, and you saw the folks go past uh, Darcy that are the people in yellow, and you know those are the Vista people, the people that work to keep our everything safe. Absolutely. All right, amongst out there in the parade is our News 19 crew, and that includes Shelly. Shelly, what do you have for us, and where are you located right now? in red. Now I'm here with a first timer today. I have my friend Christiana. Now Christiana is 10 years old and this is her first parade here in Colombia. Now Christiana, tell me, what does it mean to you to be out here today supporting the Gamecocks? It's so fun. It, I love it. And so Christiana told me a little bit ago that she plays basketball. She, you know, she's just starting out playing basketball. Now tell me, how cool is it to look up to these girls here downtown? It is so fun. And what is your position that you play basketball? Guard. You play guard? Okay. So what, what, have you learned some tips and tricks from the girls? What have you learned from them? To keep my head up. Okay. And so tell me a little bit. So the first time, who are you here with today? My mama. Your mom, okay, have you guys been Gamecock fans all your life? Tell me a little bit about it. She has, I think. You, okay, okay. So how are you How are you doing today? You know, it's hot out here. How are you keeping cool here supporting the Gamecock? Uh, uh, I have some fun. Okay, cool, okay, all right. Christiana, 10 years old here. It's her first parade here downtown. Now we have a lot of first timers here, Christiana being just one of them. I spoke to a couple people who are here from out of state, all the way from Texas, you guys. We are getting people from all over the U.S. coming out to support the Lady Gamecocks, not just Columbia fans. Now, if you look behind me, the women are getting ready to come out. We're still waiting. The Gamecock fans are waiting patiently, but it's going to be all worth it here for the girls to come out. The Gamecock, the fans, I should say, the energy is great. And now we're just waiting for them to come out. Andrea, back to you. Um, I hope you can still hear me. I know it's loud out there, but just so everybody knows, because you have seen and we haven't, what are the Gamecock women's basketball players riding in? So what should we be looking for and everybody at home be looking for? Are they in one car together? Is it a bunch of cars? Is it a float? What are they riding in? Yeah, so if you pan out that way, the women gam the women Gamecocks are in, it looks like they're in, now if you see this big float right here is kind of coming through right now. Everyone is on here waving, say hey, go Gamecocks! All right, Andrea, let me tell you, one second, let me get a clear view. <laughs> the Gamecock women are on a float all the way back behind me. Now it looks like they're in one float riding down. They'll be coming through Main Street and turning the corner of Laurel here shortly. But it looks like from where I'm standing, they're all in one float. So if you're out here waiting to see them, expect them all to be in one float. Okay, very good bird's eye scoop for us. Thank you so much, Shelly, because I think those of us who are watching at home who didn't make it out today, we have so many different live pictures going because obviously News 19 has great coverage that we couldn't tell what we were looking at. Oh, look, Reggie. So if you guys were watching a second ago, Darcy got the, the uh, yes, Darcy got a free coupon for some Pelican snowballs, and there um, there would be the people the, passing the, around. The iconic colors that are rolling through town. It's easy to spot. We got to make sure she comes to give you one because you wanted some cookies and nobody brought you cookies, but maybe you can get a snowball. Can yeah, and then while we saw right behind Shelly was Richland 1. Uh, Richland 1 School District has a big presence and we're excited to be participating in that. They were coming and then like Shelly said, all of our Gamecock women's basketball team, it looks like they are piled onto one float 
and they are coming around shortly. Shelly has a bird's eye view of where they are at. So once they hit the parade route, we will certainly let you know. And Whitney Sullivan, we're going to go back to Whitney, who's got a great, I think Whitney's got the best view of she does. In the entire parade. Whitney. You know what, Reggie? I could not agree with you more. I really do have the best seat in the house because I am about a block away from the state house. I'm on the third floor of the Opti Optus Bank building and my friends, like I said earlier, the vibe, the atmosphere is electric. There is constant cheering and people jumping up and down and waving their white towels around, all screaming, go Gamecocks. I'm telling you, a time is being had. Now, one of the things that I love that Darcy spoke about and that y'all been speaking about as well is the amount of people who are in the parade. And I just want to take a second to speak to why we are seeing so many people in the parade. And that is a testament to the way in which Coach Staley and the players have truly ingratiated themselves into this community. I mean, we're not just, they're just not basketball players. She's just not a coach who coaches at USC, but she is an active member of the Columbia community. And she has done great work both on and off the court. And so have the players as well. And so the reason you see so many different people in the parade is because they are community partners. They have worked with the USC basketball team and it really does show that not only are Gamecock fans committed to the USC women's basketball program, but they are committed to the community as well. I mean, you listen to any of the players or Coach Staley during a press conference, and they always take time to speak about how grateful and blessed they are to be in a community where the fans support them win or lose. And so it's been beautiful to see the way in which the the fams have really rallied around them. And one of the reasons why Coach Staley loves the fams so much is because before they were even a national championship team, they had people coming out in numbers that you typically don't see for a women's basketball game. In fact, not only is this parade to celebrate the women's basketball team being national champions for the third time in program history. This parade is also a celebration of the USC community. The way they have wrapped their arms around this team has really set the standard for other fan bases around the country. I mean, if you look at the numbers, USC women's basketball fans have the largest attendance, not just for games at the Colonial Life Arena, but also for away games as well. I mean, they come in numbers. They come big and they come bold and they show out for their team. So when you are talking about a committed, a supportive, an incredible fan base, you have to talk about Gamecock fans. And I have to tell you, you guys know that I'm a Clemson Tiger. I graduated from Clemson, but I am also a proud Gamecock fam because what these women have done not just for the game of basketball, but just in sports in general, for women in general, is something that is bigger than a rivalry. It is something that is really going to be etched in history books. Not only how incredible this team is, but how incredible the fan base is as well. So right now we are continuing to see the parade route go down. Everybody waving their flags. We've got sirens going, horns honking. And one of the things that we saw last year my friends was uh, the team and coach Staley came out on some like really souped out Corvettes uh, they came in riding in style and so we may be able to see that as well but what's gonna happen is the parades not the end of this celebration so everybody is going to meet at the State House and there we're gonna get to hear from coach Staley we'll get to hear from players we'll also get to hear from uh, some of our local elected officials dignitaries uh, some of the people that you see in the parade will then go to the podium at the State House and speak as well but right now all the attention is on Main Street as people are just so excited to be here celebrating another historic win we'll send it back to you guys all right thank you so much Whitney yes we know that they always have a massive turnout and um, not only did the Gamecocks sell out Colonial Life Arena five times the lady Gamecocks that is women's basketball team they sold out five times but also uh the national championship game Reggie was the highest rated female male sporty I mean what was the 18 million yeah, 18 million I think and I think it peaked at 24 if I read read that correctly wow. so 
Yeah. Um, incredible. And that was Sunday. And then Friday night's game set the previous record. It did. So obviously, I mean, all eyes. I mean, it was, it was a great sports weekend for all the sports, but women's basketball really kind of taking its place. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the top ratings that you usually read about football, basketball, whatnot. And, you know, we see so many people just walking in the parade, as doing their rally towels, being excited to be a part of it. And that is one of the things um, when I interviewed Dawn and I said, hey, how did you build this program? How did you get so many people excited about women's basketball, excited about a sport that previously hadn't gotten this level of fanfare? And she famously said, I mom and popped it. And she's like, we literally went out and, and met people and shook hands and said hello and told them to come watch us one fan at a time. And to start there back in 20, 2008 when she came to um, Colonial Life Arena and came to Gamecocks and came to USC and then to be able to sell out Colonial Life Arena five times to me is just incredible. It is and also incredible is our incredible coverage and Darcy Strickland is out. Darcy? We're starting to get that build up. We've, we've seen the uh, nice flashing blue lights as sort of giving the appetizer of what's, what's to come. Oh yeah, Reggie, the anticipation is growing as we're getting closer and closer to the women that are the reason for this parade today. Now, one thing about Don Staley, she's never shied away about talking about her faith and what it's meant to her as a coach, and more importantly, what it means to her uh, when it comes to making sure that she's instilling in her players everything they need to know to be successful on and off of the court. The thing that she said, uncommon favor. It's on t-shirts all over. Come on over, friend. How are you? Good. good to see you. you Tell well. our friends at home your name. Ashonda Merritt. Okay, Ashonda, talk to me about your t-shirt, uncommon favor. Uncommon favor. Don Staley said it best. We don't question God about what can happen for you. As long as you put it all in him, he will make sure that he produces everything that you are prayed for. So we believe, just like she's instilling her players, that it's uncommon favor for the USC Gamecocks, and that's why they were able to succeed with the 38-0 record this season. Amazing, because it's uncommon favor and giving glory to nothing but God. Well, I'm telling you what, if you missed church Sunday, if you missed church this morning, don't worry about it, because y'all I just gave you your sermon for today. <laughs> Let's talk more about the women. I know you had a chance to go to a couple of games this yes. season. What does it mean as a woman to support women in athletics? I know you've you've got a nice little family, you know, a couple yes. of kids, a few kids, four, four kids. kids. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about supporting women's athletics. So I think especially me being a mother of two daughters, making sure to let them know that we are always be there to support women because it was a time that women's sports weren't as prevalent, prevalent as men's sports. So just being there, putting our heart and soul, pouring into them, praying alongside them to for their successes, even if there was a loss, making sure to continue to uplift them. Because these women are being examples for not only young women, but young boys to show them that anything is possible. As long as they practice, persevere, continue no matter what has happened they can succeed and what we're praying for and hoping for for seasons to come is continued uncommon, uncommon favor. favor and you got it in pink and green is there a reason why you decided to have uncommon favor in pink yes. and green because we are we are the women of alpha kappa alpha sorority incorporated make sure that we support all women's sports because again we believe in uncommon favor as well just a few minutes ago i said gamecock women's basketball brings everybody together including deltas and aka's yes yes <laughs> Supporting women. Go Gamecocks. Andrew, we're going to send it back to you guys in the studio and step out of the way because, again, I think the highly anticipated women's basketball float is not far from where we are. I can hear the crowds getting louder. I don't know if you guys can in the studio. Okay, we don't actually think that the women's basketball float has started yet because we do have a camera at the vantage point of the beginning of the parade, but I think what everyone was screaming about, Reggie and I figured it out, was the Bojangles truck. Absolutely. I think some, some, <laughs> somebody was getting something free. <laughs> People, Reggie and I are looking at this going, what is everybody running up to this truck for? What is happening? And then we realized it was Bojangles. So either some coupons or some uh, some edibles was, uh, was passed So they out. were passing out something delicious, obviously. They were obviously. not passing out sweet tea because we were no. the, uh, um, All right, Darcy talked about Uncommon Favor as one shirt that everybody is seeing. Another hilarious shirt. Oh, there's the Bojangles truck causing a frenzy uh, for you. Yeah, he's hyping people up. And I don't know if he's shooting coupons into the crowd or T-shirts, but... Um, Uncommon favor is one. And then I saw this hilarious shirt over the weekend. It said 38 0. And then it said, You win some, you win some. There you go. <laughs>
pretty much, uh, you know, whoever came up with that is uh, marketing Brilliant. Genius. You win some, you lose none. Okay, one thing I want you guys to look out for, because Reggie and I uh, both know that this is coming, is Ashlyn Watkins, of course, is going to be in this parade. Somebody Reggie and I both know very well. Ashlyn Watkins is a Cardinal Newman graduate, and because she is a local girl, the Cardinal Newman pep band and cheerleaders are going to be walking with her today. And Reggie, how did you meet... Ashlyn Watkins. I was. I met her when I was covering four of her state championships that she won at Cardinal Newman. I think she she won four straight for as a yeah, freshman, she did. as a senior, former News 19 Player of the Week. That's what I was trying you to know, get you to get yeah. to. I was, I was trying to get, to get you to give a little plug. To Come on now, Reggie. It. And uh, Ashlyn, of course, an outstanding student and uh, doing very well. And again, her so her sophomore season at South Carolina. Her role expanded and she's got a little jump shot that she's been able to use to, with a lot of effect. And it's nice to see that she and Full Wiley, the two Columbia kids, uh, have their first national championship. How, and they have a chance to get more. How wild is it, Reggie, for you as a sports anchor to be able to cover a player or two players, I guess, like Malaysia Full Wiley, like Ashton Watkins, and cover their high school careers and then get to watch them continue their success as Gamecocks under Don Stanley? Well, it, it's kind of like a, an endless cycle because you've got Joyce Edwards over at Camden, who was just named the Gatorade National Player of the Year. Incredible. So, number two prospect for the class of 2024. So, she just keeps bringing them, bringing in these high level uh, five star prospects from. Uh, from right here in the Midlands. All right, and the fact that uh, Dawn always starts recruiting early and builds relationships with the players that she thinks have potential early and then is able to secure them at South Carolina is pretty incredible, right? And then obviously you have somebody who can obviously coach like she does, maximize the talent, and then you take that talent, which is five-star talent, and that's why you go 38 and 0. All right, let's get to this. I know when Brady was little, when your boys were little, one of the most exciting parts about any parade is the fire truck. And our News 19's Cassidy Byer is there right now as the Richland County Fire, Columbia Fire Department coming through. Yeah, guys, Columbia, not only is Columbia Fire coming through, our mayor, Ringelman is over here. You guys will see him as he passes me. And as some of you know, some of you may not know, this is uh, my first national championship parade, but it's not uh, the first for my two guests I have right here. Can you ladies please say your name? Callie. Callie. Carly. Carly. And you guys have been here before, right? You went to the 2017 parade. How was that? Good. And who do you, are you looking forward to seeing this time? Camila Cardoso. Um, Cardoso, you really like her? Did you watch her throughout the championship game? Yes. And what goodies have you guys collected throughout the parade? I saw you guys were reaching out for some some goodies. What were they? Candy and koozies. And koozies, okay. Candy, for you too? Yeah. Yeah? All right, well, I'm going to send it back shortly. I know uh, another thing I'll, I'll add here, the team is behind us, and that float has not yet gone yet. Um, but we have been watching them celebrate, dancing. It's been good, good times, good spirits, and I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Fun? Oh, that's fun. <laughs> we let, wait. What did you just point to that was so fun, Cassidy? Show us. Um, uh, uh, yeah, show them that float right there. There's a. Oh, here's another one. These are just. Woo! <laughs> Go Gamecocks! <laughs> I love it. People, yeah, I had some time. This, Andrea. This is. I need this to happen. I, I need this to happen every year. Yes, my friends are all around me. Everyone uh, hugs at, from left and right. Absolutely. I love it. Yes, it's definitely good juju. Everybody is feeling the spirit. And really, these put people, what, that's what she was talking about. Look at that gorgeous float. People put together these really decked out floats. Um, and you can see there's sparkle, there's colors, that one has fringe at the bottom. And still though, if you are asking and if you are waiting, we have yet to see anybody in the Gamecocks women's basketball team start the parade yet. They are still just waiting on yeah, their time. That was Richland one with that nice flip. Oh, with the fancy flip. Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah, Richland won, Daniel Rickerman. Uh-oh, it looks like Darcy has a special guest with her. I recognize Columbia Police Chief Skip Holbrook, who uh, trying to get you, Darce, and Skip Holbrook in the same shot is really funny because we're just looking at his chest. <laughs> There's a bit of a... We're off exactly. a little bit. Exactly. We're going we're gonna to pan the yeah, camera up a little bit because it's head. probably difficult to get Darcy and Chief Holbrook. I don't know if you want to bend down. I can stand on my tippy toes. Good to see you, Chief. Good to see you, Teresa. Hey, Darcy. How are things been going today? 
it could not go any better. You know, obviously we're always thinking about public safety, but that's going well and we're going to pray that continues. It's just such a wonderful thing to see people come out to celebrate excellence and community and everything that is Don Staley and the women's basketball team. So, As a city manager, you put this together in less than a week's time. We did. We started kind of slightly talking to try to think about the date, but it was all centered around what worked best for Coach and the players. They've got other big things happening tomorrow with the draft and all that so it, we just want to make it so very special for them because they bring joy to our community. Awesome. Chief, I've seen your officers on every corner. There's probably a hundred people in every uh, spot. There's two or three officers in that spot. I feel safe. Good. We want you to feel safe. Uh, Miss Wilson's number one uh, priority was for everybody to have a good time and be safe and that's what we've tried to do. Worked on a plan all week and so far it's been executed this uh, Outstanding. Awesome. I'm going to let you guys get back to the parade because I kind of pulled you out of the parade route. Love you both. <laughs> Thank you for what you do for the city of Columbia. Yeah, I literally pulled them out of the parade route and said, can we get an interview really quick? Because honestly, Andrea, Reggie, this is no simple feat. This wasn't something that came together easily. Yeah. There was a lot of planning that went into this. A lot of people had to work to make sure that these thousands of people who came out today to support our hometown heroes to celebrate the women's ga um, basketball team could do it and could do it safely. Um, again, we talked talked about this a couple of times, 106 entries, quite a few beauty queens, little ones and older ones are now driving past us, but we are going to keep our fingers crossed that the basketball team is close. I heard you guys say the excitement I heard was not for the basketball team, but it was for Bojangles. I'm okay with that too. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. So we're going to send it back to you in the studio and keep our eyes on the ladies. Um, yeah, Darcy, just so you know, Reggie was in his feelings because he was wanting some Girl Scout cookies and didn't get any. And then you got um, your Pelican snowball. And then we saw people getting Bojangles gifts. And then I see Texas Roadhouse coming up as well. This is torture. Well, they're, they're doing this on purpose. <laughs> they're doing this on purpose. Darcy, in the interest of full disclosure, I did give... Can you guys still hear me? I don't know if you guys can still hear me. Can you still hear me? We can. So in the interest of full disclosure, I did give away my Pelicans oh, coin okay. to this young lady who's been standing next to me. Tell me your name. Avery. And Avery, tell me what you think about the women's basketball team. Good. They're good? They're good. Who's your favorite player? Um, all of them. I don't, yeah, all, all of them. OK, so Avery. The folks at home don't know what you've been doing for me since you've been standing next to me the whole time. What have you been doing for me? I've been looking on her phone and tell her all the numbers are we close to the basketball team. You have been doing an excellent job. I'm going to let you go back and enjoy the parade, and then I'm going to hand you my phone again, okay? okay? All right, so I left my glasses, and so the print on the email is really small, and so I just hand my phone to Avery, and I say, Avery, where, where are we? And she says, Miss Darcy, we're at 25. Miss Darcy, we're at 36. Miss Darcy, we're at 47. So I found a friend here. It's Avery. I gave her my Pelican's coin. Yeah, that, Avery is officially an intern, Darcy. You've yeah. hired us a new intern. Thank you. She she is an intern. She, she Avery, you're an intern, okay? She is. Oh, she said, yes, okay. Baby. All right, great. We All right. <laughs> Thank you, Darcy. Okay, just to give you an update, because Darcy was saying, you know, where are we in the parade? Where Darcy is at in the center of the parade. Remember, we've got News 19 has got cameras all over this parade, but Darcy is in about the center of the parade. And they are on float 50-ish. Um, Mother Earth, we just saw um, pass behind her. So that was float 51A. And we've got to get all the way to 106. So that, if that tells you where they're at in the middle of the parade, um, that gives us a better look. But we do have both Cassidy and Shelly Garzon standing by at the beginning of the parade. So they will be letting us know back here at the studio the second right, any of those now. women's Gamecock um, floats oh, no. takes off. And then uh, with our bird's eye view, high above the skies, high above the parade is our News 19's Whitney Sullivan. And uh, the beat is strong. The beat is strong, Whitney. What's going on in the middle of the parade now? What float are you guys on? I think that's 
What kind of dance move was that? Uh, what, it was a shut down the TV dance move. So. That's what it was. The beat was so strong and the moves were so hot. Unfortunately, it messed up our signal. The but vibe, the vibe was too strong. The vibe me. was too strong, but I love it. But you know what? Oh, unfortunately, un unfortunately, because oh, um, there are. Are we back up? Oh, are we back up? Oh, can you hear us? We're on. Okay, go ahead, quick, before <laughs> it goes out again. <laughs> I love it. All right, friends. So I'm telling y'all, it is so much fun out here. It's like a giant party. And what I was saying earlier was the truck that was pulling the Richland One float, y'all, they were playing hoop there it is. Now, all my 90s, baby, early 2000s, y'all know that is a hit and very appropriate for the USC Women's Basketball Team's National Championship Parade. Now, I actually have to tell you, if you feel like things are moving a little bit slower, I'm going to give you the inside scoop as to why. So as we are the end of the parade here, again, we're just a block away from the State House. People are so excited who are waiting on the outskirts of Main Street that they keep inching into the middle of the road. And so what's happening is Columbia police officers are having to come out and say, you guys, I need you guys to scoop back so that way all of the uh, vehicles can come through. So that's kind of been causing a little bit of a slowdown right now. And I think it's really just anticipation, right? Everybody is just waiting to see Coach Staley and the Gamecocks. I mean, people have been pulling out their phones. They are waiting for the moment when the GOAT the coach Staley comes by and when the players come by. And so because they're so excited and they don't want to miss anything, people have just continued to kind of inch a little bit closer and closer into the middle of the street. And so officers are just, you know, kindly telling everybody they got to scoop back so that way we can view the parade safely. All right, my... All right, my friends, you're seeing them throw things out. We're going to go ahead and send things back. But the parade, OK, it's starting to move closely. It's starting to move and move, my friends. But we're going to go ahead and send things back to you. I think this one float is tossing out oranges. Uh -oh. uh, well, that's nice good. Day, Keep people healthy. I like that. All right. Thank you, Whitney. Now we're going to take you back to our camera now at the very start of the parade. And while Whitney was talking, we saw Ray Tanner go by. Of course, a baseball coach turned athletic director and really everything Gamecock man. And we saw cocky. Go then by. we saw cocky has his own float. That's that's a pretty good deal he's for a board, chicken, he's, he's, right? He's a VIP. And we are looking at our Gamecocks uh, women's um, basketball cheerleaders right now standing in front of the camera but as you can see there's no place for them or actually that might be the dance team because I recognize well let's see let's see if Shelly knows who they are um, um, but anyway that is that shot is at the very beginning oh well now we're there we go all right, USC cheer team is entering the parade, and that means we are getting very close to seeing the women's basketball take off. Let's check in with News 19, Shelly Garzone. Shelly, how close are we? Oh, there is that Dr. Jeff Guy. There is Dr. Jeff Guy. He is the team's orthopedic surgeon that just passed right behind. Um, Shelly, if you want to move the camera over just a little bit to the left, he's the one, if you watch basketball, if you watch football, he's the one that you will see running out to the field anytime a player is hurt. He is super important to the health of the team. Absolutely. And it's just one of many outstanding people on that staff that keep the uh, athletes healthy. There he, there he is. All right, Shelly, just don't, yell Jeff Guy real loud. <laughs> well, the yeah, Andrea, as you saw, the, cheer the cheerleaders and the dance team just passed by. Now, I've told Andrea this a couple times, but I used to be a cheerleader back in my day, so I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic. So great to see them out in their uniforms cheering on the Gamecocks. Now the parade, when we started, the parade was coming down Main Street right behind me, but now the parade that was waiting back there is starting to move through, so the Lady Gamecocks should be coming out shortly. The fans, the fans, the fans and the fans, whichever you want to go by, are out here waiting. We have these nice cars, Gamecock colors, of course, coming through. Fans are eagerly waiting. Now, as Whitney mentioned a little bit earlier, police is trying to direct traffic a little bit because people are getting eager coming towards the parade. So trying to keep everyone as safe as possible, tossing back. Now, I know that earlier we mentioned that people are tossing out goodies. We got shirts. I got some stickers that I'm really excited to use later, but also water. 
Andrea, it's so hot out here, so we're making sure everyone's staying safe, everyone's staying hydrated. As you can see, there's a lot of kids out here with their families. As I mentioned to you guys last time, some of them, it's their first parade out here. Their families have been cheering on the Gamecocks for as long as they can remember, and so they're here showing their support for the Lady Gamecocks. Andrea, back to you. All right, Shelly, thank you so much. Yeah, if we could stay up on this shot, that would be great because these are now all the people, like we said, we saw Dr. Jeff Guy go by. These are people that are all associated with the basketball team and work with the basketball team. But Reggie and I are having a hard get, time I gotta seeing get, I gotta get You get up and see who it is, Reggie. Oh, oh. have my mic on there we go um uh van lock quickly switched over to my mic but that sound is unfortunately reggie losing his batteries i'm gonna get up too and get a little bit closer is that my girl is that khadijah sessions oh now i lost mine too okay all right khadijah sessions like we said uh myrtle be there we go myrtle beach girl oh she has that shirt on i was talking about the 38 zero you win some you lose none um, but she has been an amazing resource for Coach Staley. She played for Coach Staley. She took the team to the Final Four back in 2015. And then she was a Ridgeview basketball coach here, as well as running her own AAU program, as well as doing private training. And finally, after she got some experience, Dawn hit her up and said, hey, we, we think you should come back and coach officially for the team. And she has done just that, Reggie. And what an amazing first year coaching it has been. Now, of course, if we see Coach Sessions, that means the rest of the staff should be rolling through here momentarily. Yeah, I want to see Champ. I want to see Coach Lisa Boyer, of Just course. Champ his own car. I, Champ better get his. Well, no, because somebody's got to hold him because otherwise he'd jump out. You is that know, Coach Law? He's a people person. I can't see. That him. is Coach Jolette Law, former Wilson Tiger product out of Florence, for, former Harlem Globetrotter. I covered her when I was at, in Florence back in the day. That fellow, is fellow so PD awesome. native. So awesome. Is that Deputy Chief Mel Ron Kelly right there? I believe it is. I. I believe it is. That is Deputy Chief Mel Ron Kelly right there with Columbia Police, another good friend, uh, who is making sure that people get on out of the way because these big old uh, trucks are trying to turn the corner. All right, Reggie and I are going to get back in our seats. I'm sure our director just had a small heart attack because Reggie and I jumped up to be able to look at the screen a little bit closer and tell you who's in these cars. That's why we can have nice things around here. We I break, know because we, we break. We break everything. All right, let's see. Do I see if Ch okay? Champ is not officially on my list, so I hope that means Champ is going to be might afraid. Be home. He might be home just chilling. Why? Yeah, it's kind of warm outside. I hope they bring him, and I also don't see Lisa Boyer on the parade list either. Okay, wait. Is that Chloe Kitts already? Hey, look. All right, he, Reggie's got to get up, guys. We can't that see. Is, that, is, that is Chloe. <laughs> So now we're starting to get the uh, the part of the parade where the players or the players are getting their own special special rides. So we saw Chloe. All right. And they're slowly but surely making their way through. Tessa Johnson and Chloe Kitts going by in a beautiful Corvette. Van, who do we have now? We can't really see here. I we see a W.J. Keenan uh, t-shirt in the background. So perhaps a uh, fan of Malaysia Full. And, and, Keenan is marching in this too. So here's something yep. really cool. Like we said, we have two local freshmen, or I guess Malaysia is not a freshman anymore, but we have two local products um, on this team. Um, Malaysia Full Wiley from Keenan High School and Ashlyn Watkins from um, Cardinal Newman. And to celebrate them, their respective high schools are marching along with them. So it is absolutely super cool to have this moment of the, the Keenan High School Keenan rubber band. Rubber band yep. They call them. Let's watch them for a second.
All right, as the parade continues, you can see we are starting to get closer and closer to seeing Gamecock head coach Dawn Staley. We're getting, we've seen players come through. We've seen the W.J. Keenan band, and, 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 you, and you see the chaos here. It, we're getting we're getting close. All right, Malaysia Fulwiley obviously riding along with her former high school team. Can you believe that she is just one year out of high school? A young woman has had so much success. So you see the high fives going around, and again, we're getting we're getting to the part of the parade that people have been waiting for since this parade began shortly after two o'clock. The stars are out in downtown Columbia as a Gamecock championship parade, and it looks like Tahina Pow Pow. Tahina Pow Pow obviously had an amazing, successful season with the Gamecocks. Now, wait, which band is this now coming through? This that is. I cannot see their shirts. Could be the Gamecock Pep Band. Well, the excitement is. Oh, this is Cardinal Newman. Okay, there we go. Like I like I said, Cardinal Newman is going to. Oh, there. See, there's the logo on the drums. Cardinal Newman and the cheer team out there representing because Ashlyn Watkins, uh, who has been a Gamecock, obviously graduated from Cardinal Newman, and such a big excitement for the school to have such an amazing player have so much success under Dawn Staley. And there is Ashlyn, the former News 19 Player of the Week, throwing out little goodies for the fans. Of course, Ashlyn, a sophomore with the Gamecocks, and boy, she came in as a five-star, former McDonald's All-American, like, like Malaysia Fool Wiley, like the future Gamecock Joyce Edwards. And, and there's Camila Cardoza, the most outstanding oh. player for the final four. Unfortunately, she went by really fast, but don't worry, guys. We'll get a view of her um, from a different angle. But both, it's like we're getting them to come around the corner and then they're just buzzing right by. But that was Ashlyn Watkins and then Camila Cardoso. Um, it looks like all the big players are in their own car. Some of them are sharing too. Who is this? Oh, no, I can't see. You see a photographer. He's got a great seat. Part of the social media it, squad. Was that Carolina. Raven Johnson? Might be. Van, can you see? Van, if you have a better view than us, you got to tell us who it is because we're getting blocked here by people. Is that Dawn? From Swag, it looks Dawn. like Dawn. Yep. Okay, Dawn Staley in her Rolls Royce. Is it Lisa with her? It is. Oh, I can't see. It is. Okay, Lisa with her um, long-time assistant, long -time coach. assistant and coach. And really, the driving force behind those scouting reports that people take for granted, but. Uh, and look at the uh, look, look, at at, look at the chaos. Oh, guys, this makes my heart happy. This is an amazing moment. Okay, there is no champ Staley. They must have realized that it would be a little bit dangerous and chaotic and scary. Unless he's in the trunk. Um, <laughs> he is not in the trunk. Reggie Anderson, you are grounded. Uh, Lisa Boyer has been coaching with Don Staley for 22 years, uh, which is an absolutely incredible relationship. The two work so well together. Um, kind of a yin and yang situation, uh, the way that they work together. But, you know, Dawn Staley is incredibly humble. And I say that as somebody who knows her personally and um, professionally. And no matter how many people or how many parades you put her in or how many awards she wins, um, trophies she wins, she still is grateful every day of her life. Like, look at her. She's taking her pictures. People are handing her cameras and saying, hey, I want a selfie with you. Um, and that's what she meant when she said she mom and popped it. She just really wants to give everybody their moment and let each one of these amazing fans know that they are important to her and that they matter to her. Oh, is that the Richmond County Courthouse right there? Is that where we, yeah, that's where we are. We're right starting at the Richmond County Courthouse. But you see the uh, security that is accompanying the coach and they're still keeping everything moving because obviously they've got a speech they have to give at the state house and that's where the parade will will culminate in just a little bit as right. they make their way down main street it looks like our camera just flipped over to a different view let's see what this is i see some championship shirts are these let's see reggie who do we have here who do we have here reggie i see mac Rodell, long longtime equipment manager out front and this might be the CLA staff. Oh, and it says some women's this basketball, women's alumni. basketball alumni. alumni right here. All right, well, let's, Darcy, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so this was the float that just came past us with a, uh, a 
women's basketball alumni, but I want to show you something else too real quick. Well, there's Ray Tanner in this vehicle. Josh, pan up to the tree real quick. Zoom in. This young man was determined to make sure he didn't miss one float in this parade. <laughs> so they are not just on the road, but they're also in the trees watching this parade. Cocky's going by right now and the crowd is getting excited. I think you guys have seen some of this from a different camera angle, but the University of South Carolina cheer squad, the dance team, they have been with the women's basketball team every step of the way, encouraging them, getting them excited, getting the crowd excited. That's Dr. Jeff Guy. I don't know if y'all remember. Jeff, Dr. Guy, how you doing? Hey, so that's, that's the team doctor right there. He's the guy who anytime something happens, he runs out on the field. And for those of you who remember when I was in a cast about a year and a half ago, yeah, that was my doctor too point of personal privilege just to let you know he's a good guy <laughs> but the cars continue to come by with support staff for the team it's more than just the team that got them to where they are we see these young ladies on the court playing their hearts out leaving everything on the court hey good to see you good to see you leaving everything on the court but then they have the people who you don't get to know their names, you don't get to see who are there for them when they're injured, who are there for them, giving them encouragement, whether it is through spiritual counseling, emotional counseling, every step of the way they are here for these ladies and they are being celebrated today too. So the crowd is getting more hype. They got me the first time. I thought it was the float for the girls but it was Bojangles, so they're not going to get me again. <laughs> I'm going to be paying attention. All right. Oh. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Coach is coming through, waiting for Coach Staley. I've got a feeling that she is getting closer. Oh, oh goodness. There are people who are starting to stand in front of me, guys, so I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing is that Khadijah? I believe that. I believe that is Khadijah that just jumped right. out of the car. It is. Dar Coach Sessions. Yeah. She is a woman who needs no introduction. We'll yes, help you out Coach a little Sessions bit. Coach out of the car to Coach Sessions right okay, there. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. And right in front of Coach Sessions, we saw the strength coach, Molly Minetti. Uh, if you follow the Gamecocks on their Instagram pages, the first thing they do every day when they land in a new location is do a workout uh, with Coach Molly Minetti. After that, we saw Freddie Reddy, another great coach. And then we just saw York Florence coach that go was by again. Coach Law, Coach Juliet Law. And that means coming up behind them, we should have our first players. We think the first players we are going to see from this end will be Tessa and Chloe, but we will see as they start um, coming by. But yeah, and Darcy saw Jeff Guy again. So if you remember where we started the parade now, we are just getting about halfway through. I love Pow Pow. Tahina Pow Pow is here today. I believe she was alone in her car. Um, but you know, so many people go into making this possible and, and Dawn thinks of everything, Reggie, when it comes to coaches, strength and conditioning, stretching, all of that. And, and don't think for a second when she goes in to negotiate her uh, contract extensions that she makes sure that her staff and her coaches are taken care of. There's Tessa and Chloe. Here we go, Tessa Johnson and Chloe Kitts coming, two huge parts of the, um, of the team. T uh, Chloe Kitts posted this amazing throwback yesterday, thanking Dawn Staley for everything she had done. And it was a camp that she had done as a little girl. So there's this tiny little Chloe Kitts standing next to Dawn Staley in the picture. And again, more players, a lot of smiles all over the place. You've got the list. They are not in order, Reggie. Oh. Here's the list, but they are not in order, um, unfortunately, with who is going by. So now we'll have to see. Next, we are expecting. We haven't seen Tahina Pow Pow yet. We haven't seen Raven Johnson. We haven't seen Ashlyn Watkins. I haven't seen, Mal seen Malaysia yet either. I don't think haven't either. seen Malaysia yet from this. Um, Malaysia Paul Wiley. Rubber band making another appearance. All right. The so we band. know we if the rubber the band Keenan is close. High school Raiders rubber band coming up. Go ahead, Dars. So that means if we're seeing the Keenan band, that means Malaysia cannot be far behind. 
Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with the dancers. This is amazing. As a former dancer myself, I gotta give some love to the dancers and this Keenan High School band, if you've ever seen them perform, they are fantastic. But I see what Darcy is saying because you see the police keep having to move everybody back. They're crowding the streets and making this parade slow down. As the rubber band makes its way towards the state house. Of course, you see them a lot on Friday nights performing at halftime. A lot of work and hours goes into this, but it's nice for them to be performing here in April. Something new and different for that group. And the Keenan cheerleaders, WJ Keenan cheerleaders. Obviously, they put in a lot of hours of preparation as well off Pisgah Church Road. More security, that means more stars are on the way. <laughs> Absolutely. Sakima Walker. Well, let's see who's this. And here is Malaysia yep, Fulwally. There she goes. Keenan grad, Malaysia Fulwally. She's got her Forever 2V jacket on. Of course, she has got some swag and some drip. She is always fashionable, looking good after she got to be with her band, which is just such a cool moment. I'm sure a lot of those people in the band went to school with her and know her. And of course, my laser was the SEC tournament MVP. And Bree Hall, Dayton native, Dayton, Ohio native. Went back about three hours from Cleveland, I believe, and family and friends got to see her win a national championship at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse a week ago. Gosh, was it just a week it, ago it, today? In fact, they tipped off. Wait, is this Sunday? They, oh, they tipped right. off roughly about a week ago, right now, roughly. Oh my goodness, I didn't even think of that. All right, now it appears as the cars are speeding by, and we've got security running next to them. Maybe they decided they wanted to get these things going, get everybody going. All right, here comes the Cardinal Newman High School Band and cheerleaders once again, which we know that means that Ashton Watkins will be close behind. Oh, you've got a, the t-shirts. What do they say? Like, Ashlyn? Oh, they say Ashlyn, I love that. Um, you know, it's amazing in the off season, Ashlyn still comes back to Cardinal Newman to do some training, does some Coach Pooh Abrams workouts, and uh, you can find her there in the off season on the weekends. Here she is, a huge local star and really an inspiration to everybody around her. And she has been known to be the type of player that always helps out her teammates and builds them up. Uh, Camilla and likes Cardosa, training younger kids Camilla's too. here, <gasps> Camilla's holding the national the championship trophy. trophy. We didn't even get to see that the first oh, time that. around. Oh, there you go. There you go. Raise it. That's the uh, that's the money shot, I believe. Now, if anybody deserves to hold up that it, trophy, it is Camila Cardoso. We were worried she wasn't going to be here because of the uh, draft, but luckily she can do she both will, things. Uh, what time does she hear her name called tomorrow night? Probably. I mean, got to be a top five pick, I would think, in the WNBA draft tomorrow night. If she is not the top pick, I am throwing things at well, my you know TV. What? That means that means another team will benefit from uh, someone else's mistake. Um, she is a gem. She is, you know, obviously came to the country speaking no English in middle school and knew that basketball was her calling. And we are so thankful to have her. And now this is the car after this car, the car that everybody's Raven. been waiting for. Is that Raven oh, Johnson? Nice Raven, do you guys see Raven? One field, yeah, one Raven just drove by in the Bentley. She only had one field goal in that game against Iowa, but it was the one near the end of the first half when she stole the ball from Caitlin Clark. and really changed momentum and really gave the Gamecocks momentum going into the halftime locker room. Um, and she was really the best, you know, the Raven Revenge Tour. Everybody wanted that for her. Everybody who's a Gamecock fan watched Caitlin Clark. And listen, I'm not picking sides on Caitlin Clark, y'all, but it was very rude when she waved her off when they were playing in the Final Four back in 2023 um, when they lost. Like, she wasn't going to guard her. And Raven used that as motivation. And, you know, with athletes, it's hard sometimes. You get in your own head about things. And she said she decided to use that as motivation. She was going to work harder and she was going to come back and show her. And if you remember watching, Raven was assigned to defend Caitlin Clark during a lot of the game. And I got to tell you, um, if we can come back to us on set for just one second, guys, this hand, she had this hand like this up in her face the entire time. And I would be lying. Boy, that was fun getting to do yeah, that to say, Reggie. Yeah, exactly. Boy, that, was, that was fun. You gave me the Heisman. <laughs>
<laughs> getting to do it to Reggie. But all of us, the Gamecock lovers in us, we were just like cheering her on as she was guarding Caitlin Clark. So love to see Raven Johnson and her revenge tour. And then what did she say next repeat year? Tour. Repeat. It's the repeat tour. Yep. All right, let's go back to the parade now because we got to expect this car with Coach John Staley, although we did see everybody mobbing her, so maybe they're moving a little it bit more slowly. Well Everything's got to calm down, looks like it. By the way, the Final Four, I believe, is in Tampa next year, if I'm not mistaken. So you oh, is it? Make your, uh, make your travel plans accordingly. You mean women's basketball? Women's basketball. Okay. All right, now here is a live look again from our different vantage point. We see again the Keenan High School rubber band coming through, the drum major giving us all the vibes and the dancers. I am so into this, and I feel so bad because I know the girls said it was hot out there today. It was, but you know what? They've been training for this, and this is their time to perform, and here they go. All right, it looks like from the other view that, it, you know, the last car that we are waiting for is the car with Don Staley and Lisa Boyer, and it looks like uh, it's kind of been delayed, so I have a feeling her car has kind of gotten stuck with fans. I, I think I th either, either they are at a red light or, <laughs> or no they are or listening she, to red or, lights, or Reggie. She is, uh, she is posing for selfies. Yeah, she is posing for selfies because that's what Dawn does. She always wants to give every single one of her fans. Yeah, actually, let's check in with Darcy Strickland. Darcy, she just jumped in front of the camera and said, I don't know. But Darcy, if you can still hear us, do you know is the delay that Dawn's car has gotten mobbed? I have absolutely no idea, guys. Um, you all actually have a better vantage point than I do. Um, just to give the viewers at home an idea of where I am, the Marriott is to the left of me, and then the Columbia Museum of Art is to the right. I'm on the corner of Main and Hampton Streets. So because we have so many cameras here today, you're seeing a lot more than I'm able to see. I'm actually right in the middle of the parade route. So I can see towards the State House that they are getting closer to at least the last card that I saw with Raven Johnson in it is getting closer to the state house. I'm not sure what is behind me at this point, but I know law enforcement is still in the process of trying to keep the streets clear, which leads me to believe that there is going to be another float. Um, again, thousands and thousands of people here today to support the Gamecocks. They decided to have this parade on a Sunday because they wanted people to be able to come out and so show their support. They wanted to be able to give their fans, not fans, but fams, because they consider them family, as much love as they have given them throughout this season. So my belief is that there is still another float coming. I'm going to believe Coach Staley is still coming because law enforcement is still trying to keep this parade route clear. So you guys, again, have a better vantage point than I do. So let me know what I need to look out for, and I'll keep my eyes open. All right, Dar, so you know, there is only one more car left in the parade, and it has assistant coach okay. Lisa Boyd and Dawn Staley in it. And when we saw them the first time around when they were passing um, Cassidy's location um, and Shelly's location, everybody was swarming the car getting selfies with Dawn. And you know Dawn, she loves her. She loves her fam. So she was like stopping to take selfies with people. So I have a feeling it's delayed. So do us a favor. As soon as you see them approaching where you are, holler at us and we'll come back. I absolutely will. I'll take a walk down the block and see if I can figure out how close they are. All right. Thanks, Darcy. We were just looking at another vantage point again. Ashlyn Watkins um, following the Cardinal Newman marching band. It looks like she is getting closer to the state house. And if you can picture what Darcy was describing, they started, you know, oh, and there is Camila Cardoso again and that beautiful national championship trophy that will go in Don Staley's office right next to her two other national championship trophies. But if you can picture what Darce was saying, they started at the top of Main Street basically and now are making their way down to um, the State House and then the fun doesn't end there. We are going to be hearing from them at the State House. And now we're going to check in with News 19's Whitney Sullivan. Who, Whitney, tell us what's passing you right now. All right, friends, so if you didn't hear me earlier, I'm on the Palmetto patio, which is about a block away from the State House. So I'm seeing the tail end of the parade. We just saw Keenan's marching band and their majorettes come by and Mylasia full widely behind them because as we've been saying, she is a Keenan grad. Right now, we are also seeing our friends from Cardinal Newman. Here is Ashlyn Watkins right in front of me. Again, a hometown product. 
and after, right after her, you can see Camila Cardozo. She is holding up that national championship trophy that they have worked so hard for. Guys, I saw a sign, and we all know the, the saying, you can't win them all. Well, one of the people in the parade had that sign, and can't was scratched out, and it says, you can win them all. Look at Raven right there. Y'all, this is incredible. People are so excited. Look at all the phones up. And the reason people want to capture this is because this is history in the making. We are watching history unfold right before our eyes. Now, something that you're going to start seeing is you see a line of people who were following behind Raven's car. That's because everybody is now going to make their way to the state house. We are going to get to hear from Coach Staley. We are also going to get to hear from some of the players as well as dignitaries. But as quickly as everybody filled the streets, they are now dispersing, trying to make their way to the state house so they can see the celebration continue over there. Now, this has been something that, again, history in the making. If you asked analysts at the beginning of this season, if we would be having a national championship parade, they would have told you no. They said this was supposed to be a rebuilding season for USC, and they have proven that you give Don Staley an opportunity, and she is going to create a team that performs and delivers, and a big part of their success, they will absolutely tell you, is the support that they have received from Gamecock fans. Now, my friends, we're seeing everybody again disperse because we're going to be able to see and hear from some um, dignitaries. Again, what they're going to really do is talk about what this season has meant, not only for USC and the women's team, but what this win means for the state of South Carolina. And an opportunity, we'll really get to hear them say, thank you, fams. Thank you for showing up and showing out and consistently providing support. You know, Coach Staley has always been so gracious in the way that she says that this support group. This group of fans has really helped catapult them into the national spotlight. And so we are seeing everybody right now making their way to the state house. And the images that you're seeing right now really speak to the thousands of people who have showed up for this parade. Thousands of people right now making their way to the state house. And y'all, what a picture it is to see. Uh, so we are going to... Um, Wait to hear from Coach Staley. We didn't get to see her in a parade, but she is expected to speak at that podium, and we're definitely going to bring that to you live. But right now, I'm going to send things back to you guys. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Whitney. We Okay, here's what we think happened, guys, because now we're seeing the players trickle in. Uh, Camila Cardoso right now walking up to the State House grounds. A second ago, we saw Malaysia Full Wiley walking up uh, to the State House grounds. Um, so we think what happened, because they were last in line for the parade, we think what happened was uh, Raven Johnson just now entering with security, entering into the parade. We think that the overwhelming fan, uh, fan group on Dawn Staley's car made it impossible for her to continue in the parade. That's what it looks like. She took a shuttle to the state house. We think she took a shuttle, she took a helicopter, Reggie, she took a drone, uh, because the, what, the images that you are seeing now, that incredible, this, this is a live uh, picture, you guys. These are everybody that were on the side of Main Street that have now filled Main Street and are slowly trying to walk towards the state house uh, to be there for the presentation. So we think what happened is in that car that had Don Staley and Lisa Boyer, they just realized the excitement was too much. Okay, here we go, Ashlyn Watkins. Ashlyn Watkins out of her car now. Um, we saw before her the Cardinal Newman band and they all had number two on the back. The shirt said Ashlyn, they had number two on the back. So now that we have seen Ashton Watkins and Carmilla Cardoso both walk up to the state house, it's pretty looking pretty uh, likely that they did pull Dawn Staley's car because she was right behind them. Well, just think about it: how far she was from the state house. Yes. And she, if she if she pauses it for selfies, you know, pausing for pictures. Right. You're probably looking at least what 15, 20 minutes at least to make the because obviously when that right. sea of people, you know, it takes a while. And then you have to get up to the state house. And I think they made a, a tactical decision to uh, to. Uh, 
to get her up to the state house. Yeah, and do it a little more efficiently. And that's okay, because we're going to bring her sound to the masses. So no matter where you are, uh, you're going to get to hear us. And I hear a little uh, da 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 Go Gamecocks! We can hear our Gamecock band. And finally, a face we see and love, News 19's Chandler Mack, who traveled with the team, <laughs> who was there for all of the action in Cleveland. It is only right and fitting, Chandler, that now you are amongst the fans. Andrea, I am definitely amongst the fans, and that's the thing about this team. One thing that we know, whether it was in Cleveland, in Albany, or in Columbia, the fans travel. And as y'all can see, all of the fans are so fired up. How are, you, how are we feeling now, y'all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And, and look, the players just went through. We just saw Camila Cardozo come through, Raven Johnson, Breezy Hall, Ashlyn Watkins, Mileja Fulwali. They were led out by their schools, W.J. Keenan and Cardinal Newman, respectfully. And y'all, just the vibes here are, is so amazing, so amazing. And let me talk to some of these fans. Y'all, how y'all feeling? What made y'all decide to come out here today? This is my first year here, and I am loving it. I'm always a football fan, my first time being with the basketball players, and I'm so excited. Number one! Yeah. Yeah. Number one, 38 and 0, y'all. We love it. The girls ran the table. They did the whole thing. Yeah. Don Staley, undefeated number one. the best coach in history. She is the GOAT. Go, ladies. It's about that. You know the best. Next year! One more time! The team is returning a top five recruiting class in the country that includes Camden, Nil Edgin, Joyce Edwards. So the team should be right back here next year, y'all. And you wanted to say something. Let me get to you. We love you, SC! We love John we like that energy. We like that energy. We love that energy, yes. But, yeah, the players, they just went through. Coach Staley should be coming within a little bit. I don't know if she's going to be coming this way or if she's going to be at the stage. But, y'all, the vibes are still amazing here in downtown Columbia. Andrea, Reggie, I'm going to send things back to y'all in the studio. Game. Let's get Gamecock chant real quick, though. Game. 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 Again, all these moments of excitement, and that's when the camera decides to go a little wild on us. But yeah, this is the massive movement as fans are pushing and walking to try and get down to the State House grounds in order to catch a glimpse of head coach Dawn Staley and her awesome players. So now that everybody's kind of in that process, now we're trying to get everybody organized up on the stage, and then at some point we will start hearing the speeches from the podium, which is always nice to really speak to the masses, to speak to everybody and really speak from the heart and look forward to hearing what the coach and a few of the players have to say. Um, if you watched right in the moments after they won the national championship, it was something I will remember for the rest of my life, seeing Dawn Staley get choked up and cry in those very first moments that they were going to interview her. And she said, you know, God is great. And um, just was so moved by what her team had been through losing last year uh, to Iowa and Caitlin Clark's team and then being able to come out victorious and push harder um, this year and get the win. It was just an incredible moment. So I expect that she's through her emotions and that at this time she's just going to have excitement when she speaks at the podium, Reg. I would assume so. And speaking of excitement, Whitney Sullivan has been in the middle of it, along with the rest of our News 19 crew. Whitney. Andrea, all right, so I want to bring y'all what we just saw. There is a young lady here who was actually holding the national championship trophy. And as you can see, there are so many people who are stopping, wanting to get selfies with it. Understandably so. They're all coming up to her. And so while the team has made their way to the stadium, or excuse me, to the state house, uh, the trophy is still here on Main Street. Now, another incredible image to think about is the fact that it took about a couple of hours for Main Street to be filled with fans, but in just a few minutes, people have dispersed and really cleared out as they are making their way to the State House. But I can tell you, even as people are walking towards the State House, you're still hearing 
cheering. You're still seeing people give each other high fives. You're still seeing people yell, go Gamecocks. I mean, even though things have moved, the excitement is still palpable on Main Street right now. Also, too, what you can see are some of the remnants of some of the things that have been thrown out during the parade as well. We got some of that stuff left on the ground. But again, people walking toward the State House where we are expected to hear from a number of different people, including Coach Staley. Now, I have to say this, you know, a lot of folks will say that we live in a very divided time right now. But what has been so beautiful about the USC women's basketball team, just about sports in general, is the ability that it has to bring people together. Y'all look at this image right now. People of all different races, shapes, and sizes, like Darcy said, from different socioeconomic statuses, coming together to celebrate Coach Staley, who we are now seeing pull up. So my friends who actually stayed on Main Street will be able to get to see her. So I can't see her just yet, but our producer has let me know that we are seeing Coach Staley. And I remember from two years ago when we had this national championship parade, one of the things that I loved about Coach Staley, which again speaks to how incredible she is and how connected to the fans she is, her car was constantly stopping so people could get fixed selfies. Her car was constantly stopping so people could get hugs, so she could sign autographs and take pictures. I mean, she really makes it a point to spend as much time with her fams and connect with her fams in a very personal and intimate way. And so you're starting to hear it get a little bit louder. You're starting to hear those sirens. That is all around Coach Staley. She is pulling up. Oh, I can see her right now in her white Rolls Royce coming in style as she always does. Now you can also see the Columbia Police Department around her trying to, you know, make sure that everybody stays a safe distance. But what you're also seeing is people handing her things. She's literally signing autographs right now, as well as the other assistant coach, Boyer, Two women who have created history here at the University of South Carolina. Now, one of the things that we have to speak about when it comes to Coach Staley is the fact that she has such an inspirational story, not just as a coach, but also as a player. I mean, when you look at her career as an athlete, we're talking a three-time Olympic gold medalist, a six-time WNBA All-Star, and she has taken that talent, she has taken that experience, and she has poured into the next generation in a way in which she has created a dynasty. Once you hit three, we got three national championships. That is a dynasty. Coach Staley creating a dynasty. And then if you look at what she has just done as a coach in the last seven years, three national titles? That's unheard of, but she has done that. Not only that, she's also the first black coach to win three national titles. We were able to talk to an assistant professor with USC who gave us that information as well. So this isn't just a win. This isn't just a great sports story. We are seeing her shatter the glass. They came out and they said, nope, this is gonna be a rebuilding year. And Coach Staley said, watch this. And so the fanfare that is around Coach Staley is absolutely so deserving. But again, as you can see, her taking the time as she makes her way to the State House to say hi. I mean, folks are throwing things into her car right now, and she is literally signing them and throwing it back out there. But there is a, it's so interesting to see, it's like a sea of people who are walking with her car, because again, everybody wants a chance to get that close up, that picture, that selfie, that signed autograph with Coach Staley. And one of the reasons that we're seeing people walk with her car is because they know that Coach Staley Staley is going to take the time to sign autographs, to speak to people. You can't say that about every head coach, especially not every head coach who is of this caliber and of this talent. But Coach Staley will tell you she rocks with her fams and her fams rock with her. Again, she has done such an incredible job of really pouring herself into the community, of being a great coach and a mentor both on and off the basketball court. And that's why this community loves her, because they know that beyond basketball, she deeply cares 
for this city. She deeply cares for this state and that love is reciprocated. And so that's why you are seeing so many people just so excited to get a chance to see Coach Staley, take a picture with her. I mean, it really is incredible to see the amount of people who are literally following her car. And for me, this is a, a great metaphor for the fact that Coach Staley is leading the way. This is a visual representation of that. She is leading the way when it comes to women's basketball. She is leading the way when it comes to sports. She is leading the way when it comes to defying odds. And so I have to say, as somebody who is from Columbia, this means so much to our city. And I think that what we're seeing with the fams is them saying, Coach Staley, we appreciate you. We appreciate what you have built. We appreciate the celebration. We appreciate that you defied the odds and she always shows that love right back. Now, as you guys, we've been talking about, again, I'm on Palmetto Patio, about a block away from the State House, and we are expecting to hear from a number of different people. Coach Staley, we're going to hear from local elected officials. Uh, we're going to get to hear from the players as well. Um, again, the celebration continuing at the State House, but right now, Reggie and Andrea, the crowd is clearing out from Main Street and they are making their way to the Capitol building. Yes, we've got a great picture right now. Thank you, Whitney, of Don Staley and Lisa Boyer getting out of the Rolls Royce. They finally reached the State House. It took so long because, like you saw, she literally was grabbing T-shirts and rally towels and signing them for folks and then throwing them back into the crowd. I wanted to know what she was going to be wearing today because, uh, you know, Don Staley is a fashion icon with her Louis and her Gucci, and instead she has that shirt, Reggie, that I was telling you about when some lose none. Oh, you're gonna get, uh, that thing's gonna be flying off the shelves. Yes, uh, especially now that she is wearing it. But this has just been really an amazing thing to watch her. Oh, there's former News 19 producer Alan Wallace right there in that shot. He now works for USC, getting a shot of Coach Staley and Coach Lisa Boyer walking up to the State House. Um, you know, it, it was a, an incredible moment watching Dawn take the time and continue to take the time with each one of these fans. You can see people brought things for her to sign. She's taking selfies. She's grabbing Sharpies and putting her signature on different things. And, you know, this is who she is. And like I said, when I got to sit down and interview with her and say, how did you build this program? She said one fan at a time. And certainly um, she has shown that today in getting thousands of people to turn out on a Sunday and get a, just for a glimpse of her and her team. And of course, she's going to be making her way to the stage momentarily. We'll have Athletics Director Ray Tanner. Oh, I see Diana of, right there too. Other city officials will be up there on stage. Right on the left, you saw Diana. She's in charge of the basketball program. She goes with Dawn everywhere. Uh, and it, it had such a busy season of planning travel for the team and making sure that they had everything they needed. We've got the strengths coach there um, as well. That is, there she is right there, that's Diana. It's so important um, to get this team together and get them everything they need when they're traveling. And you know, they don't let up on workouts just because they're traveling, Reggie. Oh no, they still, you have, you have to stay. It's a 24-7 lifestyle and we've made our way, she's made her way to the stage. And we have got the support staff behind her, some former women's basketball players behind her, head coach Ray Tanner, uh, hugging the president now, um, and Ray, and uh, we're going to get a chance to hear her talk. Is that Congressman Jim Clyburn? I believe it is. It is really. And then Mayor Daniel Rickerman gave him a hug. Um, he was one of the first now, people is, in the that float. is Brad Muller. He is the play-by-play -play announcer for the radio. He's got he's called three national championship games, and he'll be the master of ceremonies, and he'll get everything started in just a moment. Great voice Brad's got, and you will hear it momentarily. In a second, and I was just going to say, the zoom in there, we saw they have changed hands. The, uh, the championship trophy has changed hands. Now Ashlyn Watkins is holding the championship trophy, even though Carmilla Cardoso got to bring it in. They say nobody's perfect, but this team was. They were perfect on game day, 38 straight times. What a team, what a year. From Paris to Cleveland, nothing but perfection. Who says you can't win them all? 
At this time, I'd like to introduce the City of Columbia Mayor, the Honorable Daniel J. Rickman. Good afternoon, Gamecock Nation. What a beautiful day. Thanks for sticking it out. This has got to be a record crowd. I don't know that we've ever seen this many people downtown. On behalf of City Council, Edmund Gow, Will Brennan, Tina Herbert, Oddity Bustles, Peter Brown, Tyler Bailey, and our City Manager, Teresa Wilson, we welcome you to the celebration of our national champions, South all the elected officials here, mayors, uh, Richmond County Council, our state senators and representatives, sheriffs and police department uh, chiefs, please stand up and be recognized. <laughs> also want to take uh, this time to really give a big thanks to the city staff for bringing this wonder wonderful celebration to life. Thank you. team brought the university, the state, the city, and its fans an unbelievable season. SEC champs, national coach of the year, topped off with a national championship, not only with grace, honor, grit, but with integrity. We as a Gamecock Nation love you all for what you have accomplished, but more so for who you are. My friend Patrick Davis, a fellow alumni, wrote a song called Numbers. And it mean, it, most of them mean nothing, but some of them mean everything. So let's talk about some numbers. Let's talk about 38 and 0. <laughs> let's talk about 3,247 points scored. An average of 85.4 a game. How about 1,761 rebounds? 702 assists, 332 steals. 297 blocks, <laughs> and most impress impressive, the average attendance of over 16,000 people. <laughs> but I think for me, as a girl dad, I look out and I saw 18.9 million people watch the national championship game for women's basketball. Sunday there was our very own alumnus, ESPN desk. So when I was growing up and young on Saturday mornings, there was a, a, a show that came on. It's called Schoolhouse Rock. And our fellow alumnus at South Carolina who knew the Blowfish incorporate this into their songs during a live show. But it taught us the most important, the most magical number is three. So three is a magic number. Let's stand up and let's cheer for our national championship magic number three. And now we welcome to the stage Congressman James E. Flutter. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, Brad. Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, that letter directed to the whole Gamecock family. Thank you so very, very much. I've always been proud of my home state, but I have never been more proud than I was sitting in Cleveland in that arena, watching all those people on the floor where their sentiments were, sitting with uh, some people who were a bit nervous in the first part of that first quarter. And then they showed a picture of Coach Staley, and she was not moved at all. I said to myself right then, we got this. And when anyone in this great state makes an accomplishment, I try to enter it into 
the proceedings of the House of Representatives into our congressional record. On this past Thursday, I was proud to stand with the other members of our congressional delegation and make a congratulatory comment on the floor of the House, and we entered into the congressional record my feelings about this great team, this institution, this city, and this state. And so I'm going to present today to all the coaches, all the players, a copy of the congressional record of Wednesday, April 10th, and you will find your accomplishments in the proceedings of the United States House of Representatives. And then, each one of the players and the coaches will get a personal letter from me. Most of it is sort of generic, except I've gone through each one of them, and I've found a way to personalize a part of it. And I will just read one little sentence in the one that I sent to Malaysia. <laughs> Malaysia, your mother came up to me in Cleveland and reminded me that you live in the neighborhood that I live in. And so when I wrote this letter to you, I said, in addition to the win, you have made your team, your university, your family, and the state of South Carolina very proud. And of course, all of us who live in the Greenview community. Season. And I know many of us were thinking about it at the beginning of the season, but we were not so sure about it. And yet, here we are. Here we are celebrating today. Celebrating excellence right here. <laughs> celebrating success right here. Celebrating world class talent right here. But also, celebrating right here hard work, commitment, tenacity, teamwork, and we are celebrating the family environment that this team created and protected. I'm so very proud of them. Yeah. And of course, we are here also to celebrate the great leadership of Don Stelly. Yeah. And Don, some people call it dynasty. <laughs> dynasty. I don't know what's the right word, but I know that you are building an empire. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for coming. This is a great moment in the history of our women's basketball program and athletics, but it's also a great moment for USC. It's a great moment for the city of Columbia and it's a great moment for the state of South Carolina. Whenever I go and whomever I talk to, they want to hear more about this team and how they did it. And I'm delighted to give them all the details from Paris to Cleveland until they stop me. So thank you, team. Thank you, Don. Thank you, all of you, for being here with us to celebrate. And keep in mind that we are only six months away from the first game of next season. Go Game Boys! And now please welcome our athletic director, Ray Tanner. Thank you, Brad. A few months ago, when this journey started, many people around the country weren't sure what the 2024 edition would be for Coach Staley's team. We all knew that it was a very talented five-star group. We knew that Dawn Staley and her staff are the best in the country. Yeah. Woo! 
But with a relatively new team, a lot of people weren't sure where we would end up. We didn't think we would lose very many games. The last time I checked, we didn't lose any games. But I want to remind you that you make such a difference for these young women and our coaching staff. We know that 16,000 plus filled Colonial Life Arena. And there were lots of games where quite honestly we weren't threatened very much because of how good they were. But the times that we you made a difference in the outcome of what happened. You inspired this thing. Of all the accolades, that this team enjoys and should enjoy for six months to come. Every team has an identity, the 17 champions, the 22 champions, and this team. For me, what stands out most about this team are two things. How selfless this group of young women were in today's world. How selfless. On any given day, there was another star and nobody cared who got the credit. Please give it up for the 2024 national champions.
<laughs> Your coaching staff, assistant coach Khadija Sessions.
And second, we just want to thank everyone who supported us throughout this journey. Thank our um, athletic, athletic staff, our band, our fans, you guys, and especially our coaching staff who brought this moment, or this group of girls together to love each other, play selflessly, and just compete and have fun with each other. And lastly, in the words of Raven Crockpot Johnson, it's time for a repeat tour. Please welcome your coach, Don Staley. Yeah! Thank you. I, I, I'm sure I'm going to miss out on telling, you know, as, as many people that deserve uh, to be thanked. Okay, I want to thank our mayor. I want to thank, um, you know, all the, the council men and women who uh, put this, this special a parade together. Um, also, want to just congratulate um, all the all the people that were were a part of the parade. Um, I, I know we had some bands from Keenan. We had a band from Carnival Lumen, um, and we had some other people that, that really need to be um, celebrated. So thank you, and everybody else that that played a role in blocking the streets um, and just giving us an opportunity actually to love up on you. You, you, everybody out there, you, yes, give yourselves an applause. Um, I, I, uncommon favorite t-shirts. And I, I don't know if everybody really understands what uncommon favorite is. I'm going to sum it up because I, I grew up in a household where I had to be disciplined, right? <laughs> Uncommon favor is when your mother or your father told you, I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> it's quite simple. Um, after, after we planned to be here last year during this time, it wasn't hard this time. It wasn't. Um, and it was a devastating loss to all of us, all of us that were part of it. Um, and I, I was hurt, deeply hurt, deeply, deeply. Um, not, not to destroy my faith, but I, I did ask why. I did. And most of us that really understand, we, we need to know. And we need to know what we need to know. But God sometimes says, I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> so it's, it's incredibly an honor um, to coach this team here. It's an honor to, to work with the best coaches in the country. Yep. It, it's truly an honor to represent the city of Columbia and the state of South Carolina. Yes, it's an honor. Um, we had so many people that helped us get to this stage. Um, we got we got our fellas back here. We call them the highlighters. Who, who is the only team that beat us this year? <laughs> um, and, and everybody, we got video people. We got we got um, we got performance coaches. We got athletic trainers. Molly Craig Hudson. Um, we've had. Everybody, if I missed you, charge it to my head and not my heart. Um, we we work with a with a president that is so supportive of all athletics. He makes he makes every team at South Carolina feel like they're national champions. So I want to thank you, President Amaritas. And I got to thank our boss man, Ray Tanner. <laughs> For, for, for always saying yes. Really, he does. He always says yes. And when he says no, then I'll just go sit in front of him. And if you sit in front of him, he can't tell you no. So uh, I haven't had to do that very often. So thank you, boss man, for allowing us to be here. Um, Maria Hickman. Maria Hickman is our sports supervisor who has done a, an incredible job working with us. We're not, we're not that easy to deal with, okay? Because we know our standard and we know our worth. 
Um, but Maria has a way of allowing us to navigate this space um, of being of being one of the, one of the one of the best teams on this campus. One one of because there there are other teams that are coming. You know, other teams that are coming. Um, but I appreciate you, Maria, for for continually giving us an opportunity to spread our wings and to do some things that some other programs aren't able to do. Um, to our players, to I, I want to give a, a special shout out um, to uh, Camila Cardozo. Who, who, uh, who has skipped WNBA draft orientations to be with you. impression of what it is to be a national champion here at the University of South Carolina. You all, you all have made it a, a, a special time for her uh, to take on to the next level, which is the WNBA, where she'll continue to do us proud. But I thank you for giving her an awesome experience. She is a two-time national champion. So But at the beginning of this season, um, I don't know why I said this. They actually asked me to say something on camera. Give me one word that's going to describe our season this year. And uh, like me, I said, expect the unexpected. I don't know why I said it, but I said it. And I, because I felt like we had enough on paper to whether that ends up in a, a national championship level or not. I, I didn't know, um, but again, these players, these players actually, um, and I have to go to our theme of this year, these players loved up on each other, unconditionally created a bond that created a heightened level of competitiveness to say, you can, you can play us for a quarter, you can play us for two quarters, you can play us for three quarters. But by the time that fourth quarter comes around, we aren't going to lose. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, the band, uh, it's not lastly, the band, thank you. Thank you for always creating you know, sweet music for us uh, to win championships. Um, and then lastly, this is lastly, lastly, it is our fans. Our fans, the ride, the seven block ride from, I don't know what street we started, but I know we're here right now. Uh, <laughs> into us as we drove down Main Street. It is uncommon. And I really, really deeply appreciate um, your love, your unconditional love, although some of you guys are you try to be coaches out there. You <laughs> just can't coach on game day. That's the easy part. But but I love you deeply. I hope we can I hope we can end our season. Thank you. I hope we can end our season with with us all in the same place at the same time. Okay, so thank you so much for loving up on us. We really All right, guys, typical Dawn Staley. They are giving love to everybody but herself. You know, she shouted out her players, her amazing staff, Camila Cardoso, who is now a two-time national champion. Uh, she talked about the way her players are known for building each other up and the way they give each other love and down moments when they need it. And we know that Dawn has always been about family and the family atmosphere that she created. And um, it is such a beautiful moment to see somebody as humble and wonderful as her get this much success. Uh, and, and she talked about it being a devastating loss, let Reggie, last year when they lost in the final four and um, you could literally feel the hurt in her voice from that loss still. But you, but you could also see the redemption yes. of having overcome that, 
overcome that disappointment. And this team really looked like it was on a mission. Granted, the Tennessee loss, or excuse me, the Tennessee win was a, could have been a very close loss in the SEC tournament. But they really, when they came out on the court, they really, they weren't just out to beat teams. They were like, it was almost like they were reminding people of what happened last year and we're going to make, make a statement. You look at their NCAA tournament scores, PC 91-39, UNC 88-41. They only beat Indiana by four. That was a close one. But then they beat Oregon State by 12. And then, of course, in the final four, they beat NC State by 19 and they beat Iowa by 12. They were on a mission. They were not on a mission not only to win, but also to yeah. prove they are the best team in the country. And they did just that and there was no doubt. And they proved it. Um, she also said thank you to everybody who showed up today. And she said in one of the funniest parts of the speech, she said, now I know y'all think you're coaches sometimes. <laughs> we're, all, we're all coaches. Because she certainly hears it. Uh, but before we wrap up our coverage, we want to check back in with News 19's Whitney Sullivan one more time, um, where I believe she has a special guest star who she likes to call her Nugget, who is one of the sweetest, bestest little girls ever. Let's see. <sighs> Absolutely, Andrea and Reggie. You know, as I'm sitting here reflecting on being able to experience this moment with my niece, who is a huge Gamecock fan, can you say, go Gamecocks? Go Gamecocks. I can't help but think about the two words that Coach Staley said uncommon favor. I mean, it has been a theme throughout this season, but I would also add that this team has shown uncommon dedication, uncommon work ethic, uncommon unity, and when it comes to Gamecock fans, they have shown uncommon loyalty. I mean, this city, this university has celebrated and been with the team in the valleys and then cheered with them on the mountaintops like we have seen today. Now, one of the reasons why I am so excited about this moment and to be able to experience this with my niece is because this is history in the making. What we are seeing right now is Coach Staley and the USC women's basketball team, they have shattered the sports glass ceiling, breaking records after records after records. And you know what? A lot of people said, hey, this isn't going to happen for them this season. This is just going to be a rebuilding season. But when you take a look at what they have done, it is uncommon. And they have shown them to never, never, ever put a cap on the USC women's basketball team. I have to say, one of the reasons why we love sports is the storytelling. And the story that this has told is an inspirational one. Coach Staley and the team has captured our attention, the nation's attention, in an unprecedented way and fueled a new women's basketball and so when I look at little fams like my niece and when I look at the sea of people who are out here today the story that has been told is that this is an inspirational team who has set the standard not just when it comes to the athletic program but also when it comes to a fan base so we're so grateful to be out here thank you sweetie we're so grateful to be out here and like Raven said they're gonna be on a repeat tour so we're hoping to be able to report back out here this time next year as well. We'll send things back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, Whitney. Real quick, we're looking back at Dawn um, on the podium, and can I just say how cool it is, if you look just behind her, your shoulder, her shoulder to your left, those are George Washington's feet. And uh, I just think it's really cool that Dawn Staley, you know, is standing next to one of our founding fathers, Reggie, having her moment in the sun, and it's just kind of beautiful. Um, but I think we're gonna check in with uh, Chandler Mack who is standing by. The fun is still going on the state house grounds. And so let's check in with Chandler where I see people aren't ready to let go of the party just yet, Chandler. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Not yet at all, Andrea and Reggie. Yeah, and one of the things that Coach Daly just said that I absolutely love, she thanked the local media for covering this team. As you all have known, we have followed this team all season long throughout the NCAA tournament from Albany to Cleveland. And it's just really awesome to Coach time to do interviews with us as well when we were on the road with the team and that's just why she is truly one of one but I'm being joined right now by a family and we all talked about throughout the show uncommon favor what coach has said all season and she got on the podium and she said what that means is I can show you better than I can tell you and check out these shirts that these young ladies are wearing yeah. this is their father Micah Micah tell me about these shirts why did y'all want to get these shirts made well, you know, my, my girl, they just started basketball, and I want to show them what excellence looks like. So, you know, um, obviously when she said uncommon favor, I think that just encompasses our entire life. We're a military family. These girls are 7 and 9, and 
and their short little lives, they've lived in all three hemispheres, the East, West, Middle West, and the West Coast. So, the, you know, we've been blessed every single ounce of the way, and so we just want a little bit, want to show a little bit of that as well. Awesome, awesome. Let me talk to y'all. So, yeah, you say, your dad said that you, you have started playing basketball. What is it about this team that makes you love them and want to support them? Well, um, it's about their team, their team, like they, they have good teamwork, work, um, they have good, they have good basketball skills and that they make, they make it more interesting. Make it more interesting, exactly, and that's what we love to hear. And who's your favorite player on the team? Who are, who are some of your favorite players? That's a tough one, right? Everybody. Everybody. Even <laughs> Don Staley. Yes, even oh. Don Staley. Uh, Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm trying to like think about who, who number three is, but it's okay. Y'all said all of them, so that's all that matters. Well, thank y'all. Talk about uh, Cardosa. Cardosa. Yeah, she always yes. talks about. Cardosa. We love Camilla. She's about to get drafted in the WNBA tomorrow too, yeah. so make sure you watch that. Uh, but yeah, thank y'all for watching, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have more on this obviously as the day goes on. They just played forever to be, so that means things are wrapping up here. But I'm sure the fans are still gonna be partying and celebrating all day long and all week long and all year long. And as coach said. Oh, as Tahina Pow Pow said up there, hey, the repeat tour is underway. We got the revenge tour over with. It went 38-0, and, and now it's time to get that repeat going. The Gamecocks got a big chance to do that as they're bringing in Camden legend Joyce Edwards to the fold next season as well as the top five recruiting class once again. So, yeah, we might be right back here next year, but I'm signing off from the State House Chandler Mag News 19, WLTX, Andrea Reggie. I'm going to send it back to y'all. Thank you so much, Chandler. And, yeah, as Dawn Staley thanked the uh, local media that has traveled with her Chandler Mack certainly is one of those hard-working fellows that has traveled with her around the country and yep Raven Johnson said it first Tahina Pow Pow said it today on the mic but Raven Johnson said it first it is time for the revenge tour and that means Reggie Anderson that we would like to do this all again in 2025. Well you know in about an hour and 10 minutes we've been exactly roughly one week since the clock hit zeros up in Cleveland. That is wild all right we thank you everybody for joining us today for News 19 special coverage of this monumentous occasion women's basketball team winning not one, not two, but three national champion. They literally are the best in the country. Of course, thank you, Reggie Anderson. I never get to sit on the desk with this guy, and I love him dearly. And thanks to everybody for watching News 19 today.